You are worthless and weak, says Rick. Ah, uh, he ain't wrong. Tonight we're going to cover it. We're going to do it. This is something we've threatened for a very long time. We are going to cover the Virtual Boy. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> that beautiful, beautiful thing. So, it consists of two parts. First is a visor, a thing that you stick your head into, a la modern virtual reality headsets. Mm -hmm. It's not head tracking, though. It's stationary. It's placed on this little stand. That's actually part of the whole thing. You sit at a desk and you peer into it in order to see these video games. And the controller Ooh. is a whole nother thing. Two D-pads! <laughs> so they thought you'd be manipulating stuff along a Z-axis, so you, you could use some, uh, some extra control. Not analog sticks, D-pads. Two of them. I don't know of any other system that had it like that. Plus on the back you had a couple of triggers and the battery pack. Because oh, yeah. for whatever reason Nintendo was trying to position this as a portable machine and... No, <laughs> it's very much not that. Once you're inside the the visor, you can't see anything around you. It's it's the most antisocial video game system ever. It's great. So it's like modern VR then. <laughs> exactly. Well, <sighs> with that in mind, we are not going to devise some kind of unique capture setup for Virtual Boy. We're going to use emulators, because screw that. <laughs> but first... First, we should see the launch game, the one that was bundled with the system, the one everyone got to play, Mario's Tennis. There we go. Oh, God, it's so red. So very, very red. Oh, I am not a fan. So we'll switch this eventually, but for Thank this first you. game, I want to give, uh, give a sense of what it's actually like to look at these games. They are red and black, much like the Game Boy was uh, four shades of gray. This is just red and black with a bunch of shades in between. It also has an, op an option for automatic pause in every single game, which pauses the game every 15 or 30 minutes and asks you if you want to take a break. For reasons that'll become apparent. Ooh. It's Mario's Tennis. It's not even Mario Tennis, it's Mario's Tennis. Mm -hmm. This belongs to Mario. And this is the first Mario Tennis game, as Alex noted before the show. Like, I guess I didn't realize that, but before Mario Tennis on N64, there was this. Yeah, I think someone mentioned that on either to my main Twitter account or to my uh, to the Retro Pals account. So thank you to whoever pointed that out. That's yeah, pretty neat. I <laughs> gotta just steal your factoid there, but no, seriously, thank you. Ooh. Should also note this and all Virtual Boy games are one player, but I'll let Alex take over on a couple. Good. You'll get your chance. I, I don't want to play this, though. I, I, I hate the red screen. Oh, it's actually very hard to see in the it red is. screen. It is! It looks like shit on our, on the uh, stream screen, too, so... Although it actually looks a little bit better on the stream screen than I think it does on the TV. So you get to see a couple of advantages of the Virtual Boy here. Uh, a couple of advantages of the Virtual Boy hardware, that is. It uses a 32-bit processor, uh, easily outclassing the Game Boy and everything else Nintendo put out portable-wise. It also has hardware scaling and rotation, so you can actually see stuff come towards you, like the ball here. And it's a true stereoscopic effect, so if you were looking through the two lenses, you would see two slightly different images that uh, give a sense of depth. Look at it on the bright side here. <laughs> Virtual Boy isn't very well liked, as you probably already know, but we're gonna see if any of these games are any good if any part of this thing is worth a damn. Yeah, the goal of this stream is to decide was was to yeah, let me try that again. It's to finally find out whether or not there are any good games on this damn thing. And I think there's got to be at least one or two good ones. Like remember when we found the good Micronics games? That's right. I think yeah. we can find good. Uh, Virtual and these are Boy. Nintendo games. This mm -hmm. is Nintendo and Intelligent Systems, their go-to second party. So they put some effort into these. Uh, Dog IRL mentions that this game is very butt centric. Yes, yes, it is. Chat definitely. <laughs> yeah, we noticed the that. Show, chat, let us know. Noticed that, that during the show. Uh, <laughs> if you play this game, you will see all your favorite Nintendo characters' butts. All of Every them. last one of them. Yoshi. From the princess to Yoshi to, to Toad. You get to see that Toad ass. Who, who, someone in chat, I'm sorry, it scrolled by, but somebody called it, someone said we should play as Badonka Donk Donkey Kong. 
I or agree. Badonka King Kong. I In fact, I'm already sick of this shit, so say goodbye to the red color palette. Oh, thank you. And say hello to one of the major advantages of emulators for Virtual Boy. You can just do white and black. That makes it way, way easier to Look see. Look at that! Oh Look at all that God. detail that was just smeared earlier. You can actually oh. see people's faces. This looks great. Amazing. All right, what I wanted to do was reset. All right, so big badonka donk Donkey Kong, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody's a lot happier. <laughs> I don't blame yep, you. I was not planning on staying that on that for a while. So yeah, Look, you can actually read the letters at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. And it looked a little bit better on the Virtual Boy hardware itself, but not by much. It was still very low resolution. A lot of stuff just tended to blur after a while. Okay, so we're playing doubles. Let's play as Donkey and Yoshi. Uh, Motek, the red was, the reason it was red was because I'm pretty sure that was the technology they had access to at the time. There's a lot of info out there about uh, Virtual Boy's development, and it's super interesting. Yeah, it was, it was a failure at the time, but since then a lot has been written about its development. For, to sum things up, uh, it started off as this really ambitious color head tracking headset. And then when Nintendo realized that it was going to be way too expensive to produce, uh, they started making cutbacks. Like, eventually so many cutbacks that the thing no longer made sense at all. They removed the head tracking, so you had to just be stationary. Apparently because they couldn't do full 3D movement with real-time head tracking, it would have been difficult. As for the color thing, uh, they were initially planning a color version, but there was some kind of judder issue with the graphics or something. And plus, monochrome was way cheaper. Yeah, they ended up going with a company, um, I forget the one. God, there's, I saw some, some YouTube documentary about it, but, uh, they, they ended up going with a company in specific that was manufacturing, like, really cheap red LED type screen mm -hmm. stuff. It was just actually pretty interesting. And that is a typical Nintendo thing to do. They use out-of-date hardware. Uh, I don't know what the Japanese term is, but it's often translated as withered hardware. That's, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing Nintendo likes to do. Stuff like the original Game Boy, which at the time was way primitive compared to consoles, but they managed to turn that around and use it to their advantage to make a really cheap, compelling handheld. They wanted to make that happen with the Virtual Boy so bad. Nintendo wanted this, but at some point, the whole project just fell apart. They had to ship what they had, and they ended up only releasing like 20 games worldwide over a six-month period. So it didn't have long to suffer, if that. Mm -mm. <laughs> On the other hand, this game has Donkey Kong Jr. It's got a big butt Yoshi over there. God. Just, just shaking what his mama gave him. <laughs> His mama being L Mama Luigi, I guess. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, uh, Dog IRL shares their Virtual Boy memory. All I remember about Virtual Boy <laughs> is getting a migraine at my friend's house after playing Wario Land. Yeah, it's, um... That's the thing. It won't give you motion sickness or migraines as quickly as current VR headsets will because of the head tracking. But if you spend long enough inside this dark cave looking at these monochrome games uh if you're sensitive to that kind of thing your head will start to feel bad and a lot of people did indeed report headaches a lot of virtual boy diehards nowadays claim no there are no headaches that's just fake nobody's ever experienced that and no <laughs> no that's don't be that kind of diehard fan you can admit things that have problems yeah Real you obvious absolutely problems. can get sick from it <laughs> all right so We've played the pack-in game for long enough, but on that fateful day of the Virtual Boy's release, August 14th, 1995, there were three other games released. Let's play them. Ooh. First up was a game called Teleroboxer. Alright, this is launch window stuff. Come on, Edward Maki, don't let me down. Oh my god, who is that? I don't know, it's just well... some dude. Also, uh... 
people are, uh, there's some folks in chat wondering if they could have done a, a virtual, uh, have a virtual virtual boy emulation on the 3ds and <laughs> you see, actually, they might well have they could have there's a workaround actually mentioned here uh you can use retroarch an android phone and a google cardboard to do a basic setup with that oh okay that's actually pretty cool that's kind of kludgy but i could see that working yeah. especially because it's such simple hardware all right we're gonna fight johnny in his robot pangaro all so right, what we Johnny. have here is a boxing game. And first of all, it's first person. Look at that. Great implementation of the uh, the whole VR thing, even if you're just faking it. Again, no head tracking, so you're just kind of stationary using the D-pad to move. Otherwise, it's a lot like Punch-Out. Just, uh... You get hit a lot more, is what I've noticed from playing this for a while. You also have these special moves that you can use by holding specific directions on the two D-pads. That's right, you have to use two D-pads at once and then use the shoulder buttons once your uh, gloves start glowing. Maybe the, not the most intuitive setup, but it gets the job done. You got your two fists, you got left and right D-pads. Makes sense. Yeah, that, that seems to work. So are you winning? I don't think so. Oh, no, not at all. Well, you get some good punches in. Yeah. Hey, take a break. I like that your robot is just you. <laughs> Move your head out of the visor. Go blink a few times. Clear Please. your vision. And then return. And Nintendo, being Nintendo, was very, very concerned with the uh, the health issues apparent with this thing. The Virtual Boy was packaged with tons and tons of warnings and notes and best practices. And it was just like, hey, if you're if you're under eight or nine, don't play this at all. You'll hurt your eyes. Yeah, I think that thing I think that's still a warning that they have with the 3DS and a few other uh, virtual reality things as well. It's not That's true, yeah. It's not good for developing eyes in general, and I guess that mm -hmm. makes sense. Up to a certain age your eyes are still growing and uh, becoming the eyes you use as an adult. And if you interfere with that, that's bad news. And also, it's not worth fucking up your eyes. I was just gonna like... say that, yeah, especially for, <laughs> for Virtual Boy. Yeah, yeah, please. Like, you want to be in a virtual world, that's, that's on you, but there's better choices nowadays. Want to ruin your eyes, get a PlayStation VR. <laughs> play, play the Skyrim game a few times. I read up on all the hidden moves, but it's really hard to pull them off, because you need to charge. And while you're holding up to your gloves, your opponent's going to take the opportunity to punch you in the gut. Supposedly there's different strategies for the later boxers, but, uh, you know. What you see here is mostly what you get for the rest of the game. Now, I actually played this game back when it was new. Uh... At the time, Blockbuster was offering a promotion where you could rent the Virtual Boy for 10 bucks. And that's what we did, me and my dad. We rented this thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're in a you got into pattern. We rented Telero Boxer and Galactic Pinball. And, you know, we had a good, a good enough time. But even then, we knew that this thing wasn't going to last. It was, it was gimmicky at best. Not to say these games weren't fun. I remember this this one especially being pretty interesting. I won. The graphics are really good in this too. The sprite work and the shading, the sprite shading in particular, is really nice. That's the thing. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into the graphics and especially sound design. Oh God, yeah. This has really. The, that's actually something we discovered last time we were going through the games. The Virtual Boy has great sound design. Yeah, like not just in composition, but a lot of these games use make great use of stereo separation and there's two speakers on the thing right next to where your ears are so you'd be hearing uh, what was an early example of p positional audio I guess you could say if you go back to Mario's tennis you'll notice the sound effects get softer as the ball gets on the other side of the court things like that guys got cool fangs I don't think I'm gonna win this one no this, this guy looks too tough yeah, those graphics. Look at that, that multi-sprite look. Just layers upon layers of robot there. Oh, 
Oh, I wish I could play this game. Wait, his head's in his stomach! Mm-hmm! That's where I was messing up. I was punching nothing. Oh, I see. Okay, you gotta punch him in the stomach. Except when he's guarding his stomach, that... That jerk. <laughs> no, this isn't going well at all. I should take a break. Alright, should have said this before, but the first half of tonight's show, we're doing all US released games. Also, bleh! That was cool as hell. Wipe out! <laughs> you are worthless and weak, says Rick. Ah, uh, he ain't wrong. Well, Rick, I think you can shove it. <laughs> Next up is another launch game. Galactic Pinball. This is the other one I rented from Blockbuster way back when. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Space World. Let's go. Let's go. That rules. Okay. That was cool. That was cool as hell. You got a few tables here. Mostly with a space theme, which makes sense it being Galactic Pinball. Alright, I want to try this after you. You want to try it now? Yes. Give it a shot. Okay. So, A and B buttons plus, I think, the D-pad. Maybe the shoulders as well. Oh yeah, for this one you could use the two D-pads as the two flippers. See, that's why you need no, two. That's why you need two D-pads. Right in the thing. That was amazing. Good for me. Also, you'll notice here the playfield is tilted a little bit to the right. That's because I think the emulator is simulating the left eyepiece, so you're getting that particular angle of the gameplay. If you looked at the right eyepiece, it would be tilted a little bit in the other direction. Wow. Nice, Alex. I. I... I am extremely bad at pinball, is a secret. Oh, and also this uses pucks instead of balls. I, I guess that's space pinball. That's how you play it. Hey! No! Please. <laughs> hey, Chibi. No, that's not a Chibi UFO. It's just a regular-ass UFO. Damn. Oh yeah, Space Cadet! Yeah, yeah, that, that Windows freeware pinball used mm -hmm. the, uh, a similar theme. And way more people played Space Cadet than Galactic Pinball. Is this enough? Say. Now it's bad. <laughs> now it's a bad game, yeah. Okay, after this I'll hand it back. Okay, thanks for clipping that hook to no shot. Yeah, I gotta gotta put that on the. Trigger. My favorite part. Oh of, God! My favorite part of that <laughs> is the let's go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just a very casual call to action there. Oh yeah, Space Cadet was part of the Microsoft Entertainment Pack, I think. <sighs> or am I thinking of something else? Alex, give me. Give yeah, it, please take me. this from my hands. Come on. I know. Danny, Danny's the pinball boy. I am the. I am the thoughtful art game enjoyer boy. And... You'll never beat Ken Ken at this point. No. Or G Yokoi. Hey, he put his name on there. Welcome to Space World. Let's go. Let's go play another table. Yeah, another commonly known thing is this system was basically designed by Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of the Game Boy and other stuff at Nintendo. People like to say that it was because of this uh, this thing's failure that he left Nintendo, but that wasn't the case. He planned to retire, like, way before the Virtual Boy became a thing. And in fact, he only stayed on at Nintendo as long as he did to finish up the Virtual Boy, because he felt some kind of obligation to push it out the door. His next system, the Wonder Swan, way better. And yeah, Alex is not just bad at games. This is a very difficult pinball it is, game. It is a pinball. It's, it's like... very unforgiving, for one thing. Well, okay, let's be fair. I am pretty bad at a lot of games, but... 
Actually, ever since we started streaming, I did get better at games, but that's that's because I've been playing games more instead of just like games. Yeah, you I... were tearing up Tycho when we were playing that the other day. Oh yeah, I wasn't. I was. uh, the other year, I mean. The other. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, a lot of straight down the middle situations here. I don't really like that or appreciate it, Nintendo. All right, in the interest of time, I guess we should move on. We got 14 yeah. games to get through, because that's all they released in the U.S., just 14. So we'll finish up the launch lineup. Once again, this is still August 14th, 95. We are the lucky early adopter of the Virtual Boy, and we are buying every single game as they come out. Last up, Red Alarm. I've actually heard of this. Hey, everybody, I hope you're reading that instruction book. <laughs> you read it once, read it again. All seven-year-olds, leave! Seven-year-olds, learn how to read, and then read these instructions. Mm -hmm. Well, you can read if you're seven, I guess. Oh, that's true. Maybe. I don't know. A launch title from T&E Soft, creators T &E of... Soft <gasps> More speech there. Creators yes. of Hydlide and several golfing games for the Super Nintendo. Not really known for their 3D shooters, but that's what this is. Digging this aesthetic. It's unique, I'll give it that. This game is all wireframe. Not a texture in sight. <laughs> I wish TNE stood for Toe Jam and Earl. Same. No, it's just the Hide Light people. Pretty cool intro sequence. Yeah. I'm... Again, these games sound and look great. Oh, you can adjust the brightness and the depth. That's interesting. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, it moves it. That... Oh, that's so cool. Oh, you can see how the depth works a little bit here. Oh, this is Nintendo Virtual Boy on the side. That's cool. Button config? This is the most fully featured Virtual Boy game yet. Adjust your eyes. <laughs> That's great. Let's do easy, please. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, bro. And look at this. It is a forward scrolling shooter a la Star Fox, but without those pesky poly polygons. You got nothing but wires here. You can okay, yeah. You can slow down and even go in reverse. There was a little introduction, a little introduction uh, text here when we were playing. It just said T and E Soft presents. Let's do it again. Yeah, T &E. it's neat. I actually like how many overlay elements are on the screen. It makes it look all nice and sci-fi. I also like how you have to use a little bit of your imagination to play this game. Your mind just has to fill in the gaps that mm -hmm. you'd normally see with uh, straight-up polygons. Oh, except when this happens. Oh, okay, I want to go low here. So yeah, it's, it's fun in some ways, but in others it makes it real difficult to tell yeah, what you're looking at. Yeah, it looks a little kind of hard to see certain things. It's like you're fighting against the wireframes. Mm -hmm. Looks like you have a quick turn button, too. Oh, okay. You, it, it is full 3D. You can go in 360 degrees here. Yeah. This game's so interesting looking. Yeah. Gotta say, I like it way better than when I played it on a real virtual boy. This does not look as good in red. Yeah, uh... Just red lines imprinting them, themselves on your eyeballs. Also, apparently, uh, this game is easier to play in 3D because it's easier to tell what's wrong. I guess that would make sense. Yeah, yeah adding yeah. that ele element of depth would make it more apparent. Fortunately, not too helpful for people without depth perception. <laughs> oh, yeah. And unfortunately, I am uh, legally blind, so depth perception is not for me. <laughs> I'm still able to enjoy stuff like uh, VR, but I don't get the uh, stereoscopic effect. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 
Okay, good. I kind of like this. It's simple, but it works. It's also interesting that uh, visual acuity is its own challenge in this game. You have to just kind of parse what you're looking at and then react to it. Alright, let's kill all these robots. I think those are robots. Oh, look at all those little people! Oh, that's Die, so little cool. people! Danny! <laughs> no, Danny didn't play the Virtual Boy when he was eight. No, that's not what did it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good story, though. Yeah. I think both of us are just born with shitty eyes. I think that's it, too. Yeah. And yeah, that's... That's just kind of something I have to imagine, the uh, the depth of it. Being like, yeah, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? But that face! You also get less seasick with the... Uh, with, uh... That's the secret advantage, though, yeah. yeah. VR doesn't make me sick. I'm, I'm a little... I have no depth to perceive, so I can't... <laughs> so your brain sick. is not confused, then. Look at these faces coming out of the walls. I like the faces, yeah! Alright, so far, this is my favorite launch game. If if uh, if you, the richest kid in the world, somehow got a Virtual Boy in all the games at launch, this might have been one of your favorites. Mario's Tennis is good, but kind of limited, because it's only one player. While this, it tries to do something genuinely different. You weren't really seeing this on consoles at the time. Even in early PlayStation stuff, they weren't really attempting this kind of uh, corridor shooter. You only got it with uh, stuff like Jupiter Strike. Anyone played that? I hope not. It's terrible. <laughs> How much was the uh, Virtual Boy launch, by the way? The Virtual Boy was 180 bucks, so not terrible, but it would set you back a little bit. Oh, look at this! Uh, flame glass. You can definitely wear glasses in the VR, but um, with uh, glasses, don't give 3D depth perception in uh, Danny's case. Yeah. Not, not to talk over y'all, but yeah. That's... My eyes are just have way different strengths. It doesn't sync up. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we've entered some kind of enclosed area here, similar to the all range mode in Star Fox, maybe. Oh no! Oh wait, I win! You did it! I mean, oh yes! Hooray! We cleared the stage! Well, you cleared the stage. I, I watched and encouraged and... <laughs> Aw, thank you, buddy! Nintendo Virtual Boy. <laughs> this is cool. I like this. It's interesting! I could see it being irritating if it got way more difficult later on because... Again, parsing what's going on is a great degree of the difficulty, and that's that's actually a fun challenge in its own right. But being shot at uh, may get old if it gets too hard. But still, look at this, we're in a cave now. Shooting at bats. Oh, I don't want to stop playing this, but <laughs> but we must. We, got, we must, we Red have alarm. to go on. Highly recommended, do check this out. There's really nothing else like it from the era. And T and E Soft, good job, guys. I was not expecting much. Yeah, honestly. me either. But that was really it seemed like they were really trying to do something different with this new format and Yeah. yeah.